Okay, everyone, before I begin with this edition of What Went Wrong, I'm going to give you a little update on some of the videos that I'll have coming and how you're probably going to get sick of me over the next couple of days. Um, this week at work was absolutely insane. I was in meeting after meeting after meeting, some of them running late. I was in meetings until 7.30, 8.00 you know, 8 o'clock at night uh, someday. So it really took up a lot of my time and prevented me from making the videos I wanted to make. So um, my next Star Wars book review, uh, the Young Jedi Knight series, that'll be coming sometime this weekend. My weekly video review will be coming tomorrow, so be on the lookout for that. And I decided to just do the NXT video since that's the easiest one to do. Just do it tonight. I shouldn't have any more meetings uh, late in the evening tomorrow. I don't expect to anyway. We'll see how that goes. But uh, crazy hectic week, and um, I'm doing the best that I can. But I'm also going to really bombard you with videos over the next couple of days because of it as I'm playing catch-up. And also, I'm actually filming, uh, recording the next episode of Weekday Warriors of Wrestling with Eric Clancy. I'm recording that tomorrow night. So uh, his schedule was also quite hectic this week. So uh, we're, we're all doing the best we can. But uh, when life and work gets in the way... That's what happens. So, um, I didn't get a video review out there for the latest WWE pay-per-view Clash of Champions 2020. I did see the show. I saw it the next day. I didn't watch it the night of. Um, I liked the ladder match. I thought the ladder match was fun. I liked um, parts of the ambulance match. I thought maybe it got a little too gimmicky with so many people coming back to... I, I get what they were going for. The heel gets his ultimate comeuppance and everybody that he hurt comes back and uh, screws him over at the end. I, I get what they were going for. It just kind of came off a little... Um, no, I'm, quite honestly, it came off like Drew cheated. <laughs> like he needed four other people to help him win. <laughs> or something like that. Well, I guess Flair didn't help him win, but he did show up post-match to drive the ambulance away. But, um... Yeah, it kind of... Uh, everything in the middle between the main events and the ladder match, kind of forgettable. We did lose the women's tag title match, which I... You know, I didn't really care about that match anyway, but uh, apparently there were some positive COVID-19 uh, positive tests that prevented that match from taking place. And, you know, everybody, whenever somebody tests positive for COVID-19, like, they immediately go, like, oh, WWE, fuck them for fucking up. Or when it happened in AEW uh, with Lance Archer, they were like, oh, no, they fucked up, and blah, 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 all this other stuff. I think... Um, and I don't know how AEW and WWE are run behind the scenes or what they're doing. I can't observe that. I, I can say that um, it seems like they're doing the best they can. And I also feel like COVID-19, people are going to test positive for this. It's just going to happen. Even if you take all the right precautions, it will happen. Um, it just seems, to, it seems very persistent. Uh, I, I've known people... Uh, I've known people who did everything that they were told to do, and they still tested positive. So, to me, it's like, it's going to happen. What really matters is how you handle it after you get the positive test. And sending them home and, you know, staying inside for a couple of weeks, whether it be Lance Archer, whether it be uh, Shayna Baszler or um, everybody else, uh, or anybody else who tested positive. I, I don't have a list of everybody who tested positive. But it's something that you have to prepare for. It's something that's going to happen you're going to get people that test positive. I, I think AEW has been remarkably lucky uh, that Lance Archer, as far as I know, was the first one. I, well, Moxley had that bit where his wife tested positive, so they uh, you know, took some precautions with him. But they've been remarkably lucky that this is, as far as I know, the first positive COVID test they've had. But, it again, it's going to happen. You just got to... It's how you handle it afterwards, uh, after you get the positive test, and uh, being able to move forward from there. Because it's like, look... 2020 has not been fun. We all know this. But um, I, I don't get mad at people for testing positive with COVID because, again, it's so prevalent that it's you're, people are going to get it. It's just how it is. Uh, it matters how the company handles it once they get the news of the positive test. And uh, I think, as far as I can tell, WWE and AEW did the right thing. So I, I can't really knock them for anything. But uh, enough talk about uh, the undercard of Clash of Champions. Let's talk about the main event. Um, I enjoyed how Roman Reigns as a heel was presented and how he beat the ever-living crap out of Jey Uso. So much so that I am going to start watching SmackDown Weekly. We'll see how well that goes or how long that lasts. But I am digging Roman so much as a heel... I'm going to watch SmackDown because WWE is giving me something I want, a heel I can sink my teeth into. Will it last? I don't know. Uh, will the program 
with The Rock, uh, that's heavily rumored. Will that take place heading into WrestleMania next year? Who knows? Who knows if we're even going to get WrestleMania next year? I don't know. Who? Uh, apparently, we're getting the XFL back in 2022, which I'm actually okay with that. Because um, I thought they... Uh, COVID-19 really ruined a good thing there. Because I was kind of digging this new version of the, the XFL. But uh, in any case, so... Uh, wanted to get all of that out of the way. Um, also, at the end of the video, I'm going to do a preview video for NXT TakeOver 31. Um, but before I get there, I want to talk about why NXT isn't as good as it once was. And why um, oh, there's all these factors that are impacting the show that are keeping it from being the NXT that we all knew and loved. And there's a lot of things that uh, WWE has done in the last year since uh, NXT moved to USA. Uh, to compete with AEW, which is exactly why that happened. Um, which, by the way, Triple H's comment, we were here first, when asked if NXT was going to move to a different night, as rumored, and it's like, well, we were on Wednesdays first. It's like, okay, I I've said this before, I'm going to say it again. You were on Wednesday nights on the WWE Network. That was when your episode aired. I never, in the entire time NXT was on the WWE Network, I never once watched it on Wednesday nights. And even when they first moved to USA and they had a couple weeks head start over AEW Dynamite, I watched it on Wednesdays once, and that was the opening night. That's the only time I've ever watched NXT on Wednesdays. So to suggest that, like, it's some sacred night that NXT has had for years and years now, it's like, no, you were on an on-demand service, and I watched you on Saturdays because I knew it was at, you know, it was at my fingertips. I could watch it whenever I wanted. And sometimes when the TakeOver would be on a Saturday, I would watch the Go Home, I, I guess you would call it the Go Home NXT, right before TakeOver. Because it was just, uh, I'd just gotten to that habit. Because, you know, typically on Wednesday nights, um, well, actually, uh, when it was on Wednesdays, um, it was up against Lucha Underground on El Rey. And it's like, uh, Lucha Underground was not uh, on an on-demand service. So I watched that instead. Because I knew that NXT was going to be sitting there waiting for me um, on the WWE Network. So I was like, yeah, I'll just wait till Saturday. It's fine. And um, and then they moved to USA, which was a move purely done to hurt AEW. And that's that's my take on the matter. And the fact, you know, people talked about the ratings and how when they weren't going head-to-head, -head, NXT's numbers went up, AEW's numbers went up. It would be beneficial to both companies if they just weren't going head-to-head -head with each other. Um, Vince doesn't care about that. Vince is happy to take... 150,000, 200,000 viewers away from AEW to keep them from growing. That's the goal. Like they, The goal is not for NXT to succeed. The goal is to hurt AEW. And as long as they're both on Wednesday nights, that's the function it's going to fill. And that's it. That's just how it is. Um, there was no, at least from Vince's point of view, that's uh, what the goal is. And it, it's feels kind of dirty to use NXT as a weapon because before this, before the whole Wednesday Night War thing, NXT was so pure and it was its own thing. And now, granted, some people accused it of being Vince's way of trying to kill the indies by signing everybody they possibly could and presenting a, you know, kind of an ROH-style show, um, but with a bigger budget in the WWE branding. And it's like, yeah, I mean, you could make that argument, but at least it wasn't... Um, you know, I could still watch ROH. I could still watch Impact if I wanted to. I could still watch New Japan. I could still watch all the shows I wanted to watch. NXT is not hurting that. It's not directly going head to head with anybody. I could watch it. I could still watch all the wrestling that I want to watch. NXT wasn't interfering with all of that. And yeah, there is a move to like sign as many people as possible so nobody else can have them. Um, and now we're in a case where WWE has like twelve thousand wrestlers on their roster, like. I mean, it's got to be, their roster's got to be almost as big as WCW's was uh, during WCW's peak. Um, you know, but uh, but it didn't interfere with anything, and I was able to kind of enjoy NXT as its own thing and then enjoy all the other wrestling shows as its own thing. Uh, now that they've been put in direct competition with AEW, um, th that is no longer the case. But anyway, so it's been over a year that NXT has been on USA. It's been over a year that uh, they've been or close to a year, anyway. Close to a year that they've been going head-to-head -head with um, AEW. And in that time, NXT has transformed into something that lost a lot of the charm and um, 
positive qualities that it once had prior to the Wednesday Night Wars and when it was on the WWE Network. So uh, to look at it, what went wrong, uh, what are some of the things that I liked about NXT pre-Wednesday Night Wars? I liked the slower, simpler pace of the show where they didn't worry about having pay-per-view quality matches on TV every single week. They worried about stories angles and build up that was their main concern on nxt and you'd get squash matches you'd get angles you'd get promos every once in a while you'd get like a big title match or something and those felt like big deals because they didn't do it all the time uh not everybody was on tv every week so like i would watch say the vaude villains who i really liked i really liked that whole act um and i wouldn't see them for a couple weeks and then they'd pop back up and it would be in instantly interesting because i hadn't seen him in a couple weeks so nobody got overexposed enzo amore is probably the best example of not being overexposed on nxt because he he's all about that entrance that's what enzo's all about and when you start putting him on raw and you put him on tv every single week that is going to wear out and that's going to wear thin pretty quickly but on nxt he wasn't on tv every week so it worked and it was able they were able to get more out of it by not using him all the friggin time and you would have these very simple shows that kind of felt like 1970s, 1980s wrestling television where it would be all about selling, you know, getting you to go to the big shows or go to the, the house shows or go to the big events like the Shea Stadium stuff. And um, it had that type of feel to it, but with a newer coat of paint, like a newer production and, and a modern look. And then you would get to these takeover specials, and it would knock your socks off because they've slowly been putting all the bricks in the wall and making sure that everything fits. And and then they would get to the takeover specials, and they've got you waiting, uh, willing to crawl across broken glass to see this stuff, and then they would just completely knock your socks off. I liked the pacing of the old NXT. Um, it was an hour-long show. It didn't beat me over the head. It was simple. It was slow-paced, and then when you get to the takeovers, it was friggin' amazing. And there was a time when, like, the takeover events were, like, the most highly anticipated events of the year, for me, anyway. I can't speak for everybody else, but for me, it's like, oh, boy, it's another takeover. Here we go. And that's been diluted. Uh, of course, COVID didn't help. We lost the WrestleMania weekend takeover show. But, um, but it's also, like, when you're putting on a two-hour show, that's live. And you're going head to head with another program, and you're deliberately blasting through all of your high quality matches. Like they did, Riddle, Matt Riddle versus Adam Cole should have felt like a big deal. And that should have, been, under normal circumstances, that would have been safe for a takeover. They did it immediately when they started going head to head with AEW. Uh, and they kind of emptied out their gun there in that regard. And they've done it a few other times. Uh, over the course of the year, and those like really epic matches that NXT is known for, they don't feel as special now because they do them all the time on TV. And again, you know, yes, COVID uh, hurt the atmosphere of these events and hurt the atmosphere of NXT like it did everything else. It, I mean, it, nobody wasn't. There isn't a single wrestling show on the planet that hasn't been negatively impacted by COVID. Um, I mean, look at ROH right now. Their shows are really well produced and really good. But there's no crowd, and so there's no atmosphere, and that's a big problem. But uh, it's also one that's like, well, what do you do? You can't do anything about it. It's just the way that it, 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 it is what it is at this point. So, um, so you have that going on. And now we're at a point where I'm going to preview it in a little bit, but you have this um, takeover coming up, and I feel like, didn't we just have one? We just had one in August. It doesn't feel like it was that long ago that we had a takeover special, and it's like, oh, no, don't start getting into, like, the main roster stuff where you got to have a pay-per-view every two weeks or anything like that. It's, I mean, WWE has overexposed their content to such a degree that it's embarrassing already. It's like, all right, so you've got three-hour Raws, two-hour SmackDowns, 205 Live, uh, which I don't know anybody that... Does anybody still watch 205 Live? I have not watched it in a long-ass time because I've pretty much given up on the Cruiserweight division. I will touch up on that in a minute. But... um. Uh, there's just so much programming going on right now in WWE that when you throw NXT on top of it, it just gets lost in the shuffle with everything else. As before, you know, on the network, it was kind of its own niche little thing. It wasn't, um, it didn't feel like Raw, it didn't feel like SmackDown. It, it felt like its own niche little thing that I could enjoy on the network. And now it's like, now that it's on USA, it kind of feels like it's lumped in with everything else that WWE is producing. And it doesn't have the, uh, it doesn't have that niche appeal that it used to have. Um, 
so that's a problem. Uh, another problem is the shows don't feel as fresh as they used to because you've got guys here like Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa and Velveteen Dream and uh, Finn Balor who went back there. Adam Cole, uh, the Undisputed Era. These are guys that have been on NXT forever when a lot of the excitement of NXT initially was we saw it as a developmental brand. It's like, okay, let's see who's coming up. And then when somebody would move from NXT to the main roster, it felt like kind of a big deal because we already have some kind of built-in investment to these people. And now guys are just stuck there. And because they don't want it to be seen as a developmental brand anymore, they want it to be seen as like a legitimate third brand to the WWE. And once you do that, guys, guys and gals stay there longer, and things aren't as fresh as they used to be. Um, I mean, I, I've gotten to a point where it's like, I don't want to see Johnny Gargano versus Tommaso Ciampa ever again. I'm like, don't you, please, for the love of God, don't ever do that match again. Um, you know, and they're, it's not at the degree that uh, Raw and SmackDown have gotten to. Uh, with a lot of their pairings, or like, it's not like in 09 when it was that endless cycle of Triple H, John Cena, and Randy Orton. And I just wanted to jump out of <laughs> jump out a third story window just to prevent myself from ever seeing one of those matches ever again. But it is it doesn't have that exciting freshness that it used to have because it feels like I'm seeing a lot of the same people, and you can only do so much with the same people, and there isn't that fresh like influx of talent that there used to be um, with NXT because they would get some. You know, because the it was always um, it, it always felt like they knew when to cycle somebody out at the right time and when to bring up somebody new uh, to NXT, and that's basically completely lost at this point, which is unfortunate. Uh, another problem that they've run into, and I hate to say this, but it's gotten into the same problem with all of WWE, which is the too many titles uh, situation. You've got North American title, you've got tag titles, you've got uh, women's title, women's tag titles, which can be defended on NXT. Um, you got the NXT Cruiserweight Champion, uh, which was rebranded as a Cruiserweight title. And they've got the world title, obviously. And that doesn't speak to the NXT UK. That's its own thing, and I don't even want to bother getting going down that rabbit hole. But uh, Although the existence of NXT UK doesn't help, uh, where it's... Um, y you know, it, it, it kind of overextends the brand when you have, like... Like, NXT is like the extra brand of WWE, and now you have the extra brand of the extra brand of WWE. It's really bizarre, but... Um, but yeah, one of my knocks against Raw and SmackDown is always... And New Japan, to be perfectly honest, has been too many titles, too many belts. And now you've got a mid-card title, and, you know, the women's tag titles can be over there, and you've got a Cruiserweight title, which... Um, I guess I'll take this opportunity to go after the Cruiserweight Championship. Um... The Cruiserweight division holds no interest for me at all. Uh, it just doesn't. I, I can't uh, get invested in the division. And I talked about this before, but I think a big part of it is that in WCW, the Cruiserweight division worked because they offered something completely different than what you saw at the main event level. Goldberg and Hogan and The Giant and Lex Luger and Kevin Nash and those guys are not going to have the same type of matches that you would see with the Luchadors. Um, or that you would see with Eddie Guerrero and Chris Jericho and those type of guys, Dean Malenko. Um, it's a, I'm not saying one's better than the other, I'm just saying they're completely different. And wrestling works best when it's a variety show. And you have different people with different abilities and different sizes and all this other thing. I, I like varying things. I don't want to see nothing but cruiserweights the entire show, and I don't want to see nothing but heavyweights the entire show. I like different things, and I don't want to feel like I'm seeing the same exact match uh, all throughout the show. And when you put a cruiserweight division in the modern era, and especially on NXT when you've got Adam Cole as a, as a world champion, Finn Balor as a world champion, Johnny Gargano as a world champion, uh, Tommaso Ciampa as a world champion, you see where I'm going with this. It's like, dude, the cruiserweights are at like the main event level of NXT. So what's the point of having a separate cruiserweight division? I, I don't see the point of even having it aside to you know keep talents under contract so they don't go anywhere else i, I mean that's the real reason <laughs> they have the cruiserweight division but um they don't offer anything that's that different because the style of match that you see at the cruiserweight level you see uh in the main events so what's the difference it's just the same thing and there's no the lack of variety is there and you know some cruiserweights can work a main event style. Benoit could do it. Eddie could do it. Those were two guys that could make you forget that they were small. Rey Mysterio, 
that was a bit of a tougher pill to swallow. Him as world heavyweight champion never really worked. But, um, you know, Chris Jericho, absolutely. Dean Malenko, a eh, little bit lacking in the personality department. But, um... I, don't, I just don't see the point of a cruiserweight championship when you've got cruiserweights in the main event already. Um, and to me, why not just make, like, I don't know, why, why not just have the cruiserweights, you could probably just put them in tag teams and go for the North American Championship or uh, spread them out all over Raw, SmackDown, or, or I, I don't know, I feel like the cruiserweight title is something that would be better suited for Raw or SmackDown because on NXT, it's just, like I said, it's like those are the type of guys that get the main event spots. So it just doesn't, hold any interest. Now, on Raw, you know, you've got Randy Orton and Keith Lee going at it, and let's say Randy Orton and Keith Lee is the main event, you've got Braun Strowman and The Fiend, and say that's the main event. So, okay, then you've got, uh, or Roman Reigns, we'll throw Roman Reigns in there. Um, and then you've got a cruiserweight division, you've got a cruiserweight match to, like, be the mid-card or open the show. There you go, it fits. Uh, it fit a lot. It would fit a lot better here than it would on NXT. On NXT, it just meshes in with everything else like ex way too well, way too well. It just kind of gets lost in the shuffle. And actually, because um, I still I watch AEW on Wednesdays and then I'll watch NXT on Saturdays, and I typically skip the cruiserweight stuff. I like most of the time, a majority of the time, I skip the cruiserweight stuff because it's just I don't care. Like I just don't care, and I don't want to waste my time watching something I don't care about. It's like the uh, when New Japan would do, like, the eight-man and six-man tags, it's like, eh, when your whole undercard is nothing but that, I could skip those and just uh, go to the matches that actually matter. Um, which, by the way, New Japan, I am up to day five on the G1 Climax. I'm a, a few days behind, but I get, I get caught up, you know, little by little. But um, So, yeah, and that leads us to where we are now, where, like I said, they're, they've overexposed the brand, they have too many belts. They have too many... Um, well, I mean, they've got a Cruiserweight title that doesn't add anything. Um, they've got um, talent that are... You know, they've been there forever, and they've been there so long that they're being put into roles uh, that they aren't suited for, like Johnny Gargano being a heel. I, I've spoken about that several times. I don't like it. I'm not a fan of that decision, and I don't think it works for him or NXT as a whole. Uh, but it's something they felt they had to do because... What else are you going to do with Johnny at this point? Because he's been on NXT forever. And, yeah, so overexposed brand, too many belts, shows too long, and now we're getting take we're getting into that takeover on top of takeover deal, and it's like, oh, no, there we go. And I'll give you a fairly recent example of how things played out on TV and how it ultimately kind of hurt the takeovers as these big specials. Uh, we just recently, just a couple months ago, we had the Great American Bash TV special where Keith Lee won the championship and became double champion. And then at the next takeover, he's already dropping the belt to Karrion Cross, and then Karrion Cross got hurt, which was an unfortunate uh, incident that occurred that I'm sure derailed a lot of their creative plans. But at the same time, it's like we just had this guy win the two belts, and now at the very next takeover, like a month later, he's already dropping them. And now, we've already had like three champions in the span, and great, a large part of that is because of Karrion Cross's injury, but um, it just felt like we saw a little too much belt hopping uh, a little too quickly, and uh, you know, we already got like a free takeover on TV with the Great American Bash, and now, uh, then at the very next takeover, they basically undid what they did with Keith Lee because they wanted to move him to Raw. He's one of the few guys to actually move off of NXT. And, um, I don't know, it made it feel rushed. It felt like when they did Karrion Cross versus Keith Lee, I'm like, I feel like they should be building up to that over longer. Because old NXT would have done that. It's like, nah, you don't do that at the next takeover. You do it at maybe the one after that. And then that would probably be the right time to pull the trigger on a big Haas battle for the world title. Because I felt like Karrion... Uh, Cross could have benefited from a little bit more establishment, but they, they've got too much programming to fill, so they got to blast through that stuff as quickly as possible. And it, ultimately, it doesn't mean as much when they do that. I remember when it was rumored that they were going to extend the number of takeovers per year to six? And, and this was a few years ago, and I was like, please don't do that. Just keep it at four, and that's a nice level. You know, four or five. I think we're fine. We don't need more than that. We'll be good. But um, it feels like a lot of the things that drew me to NXT initially are kind of gone now. And, that, and I'm not saying NXT is a bad show. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying it's a bad show. It's a very straightforward, I don't feel like I'm missing much if I skip it, 
you know, kind of their show. Like, that's the best way to describe it. It, it exists. And it's an okay watch, but it's not a must-see. And NXT used to be... I, I don't want to say the show on the network was must-see, but it was... It was must see if you wanted to care about the takeover specials. That's the best way to describe it. Because again, it was they weren't worried about pay per view quality for the weekly shows back then. And I thought it was much better back then. Um, just you know, my personal take. But anyway, uh, let's go over NXT Takeover Thirty One. This card. Uh, we've got Santos Escobar defending the NXT Cruiserweight Championship against Isaiah Swerve Scott. Like I said, I don't care about the Cruiserweight division at all. Although I was surprised to hear that Santos Escobar. Uh, also known as uh, El Hijo de Fantasma, also known as King Cuerno from Lucha Underground, uh, who I was a big fan of his in Lucha Underground. I thought he was great. He was like the luchador version of Randy Orton. And uh, uh, so I was surprised to hear that he was the title holder. I'm like, oh, good, good for him. I didn't know he was. I didn't know WWE signed him. I was like, holy shit, that's news to me. I, I didn't know that. So you know, good for him. Hopefully they have a good match. They'll probably have a good match. It's just it. I just don't care about the Cruiserweight division. That's the problem. Oh, uh, that, that's, that is the main problem. But anyway, uh, then we've got Kushida taking on Velveteen Dream. Both of them just uh, fairly recently returned to NXT television, and it felt like, well, we've got all our, our other big matches lined up, so let's just have them go up against each other and see what we can do with that. Um, then for the Women's Championship, we've got Io Shirai taking on Candice LeRae. I feel like I've seen that match at least three or four times already. I don't know. Maybe I'm getting them confused. But I feel like I've seen that match already. And then for the North American Championship, it's Damian Priest versus Johnny Gargano. Like I said, I don't really care all that much about Johnny as a heel, but I'm actually kind of digging Damian Priest. I think he's coming off as kind of cool, and I'm like, yeah, that's, that's kind of neat. Uh, hopefully he retains. But Johnny, I feel like, loses a lot at these things. So it's... They call him Johnny Takeover. I'm like, dude, his record at Takeover, I think it sucks. I mean, I haven't gone... And crunch the numbers, but it feels like he loses a takeover way more than he wins. So it's kind of like how Shawn Michaels is Mr. WrestleMania. I'm like, yeah, but his record is awful at Mania. It was like six and eleven or something crazy like that. It's not great, um, but you know, match quality matters more than wins or losses, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess. And then in the main event, we've got Finn Balor taking on Kyle O'Reilly, who feels like he got put here because they didn't know what else to do, and they didn't have enough time to build a really strong NXT championship match, so they just said, screw it, we're just going to do this. Kind of had the attitude of Starcade 89, where they wanted to do Sting and Flair, but they needed more time to build it. They had already paid off Flair and Funk, so they are like, all right, let's just do this stupid Iron Man thing just to get us to Flair and Sting in 1990. Um, by the way, I am working on a series of Starcade videos, and I have rewatched every single Starcade event, and you will be seeing those videos starting in November, so be on the lookout for those. But, yeah, my take on NXT TakeOver 31, it'll probably be a solid show. It'll probably, the, you know, give 110% uh, effort that NXT usually does. And um, so I, I'm not saying the show's going to be bad. I'm just saying my interest in NXT has dwindled significantly. And it it doesn't help that it's like, you know, when I heard that TakeOver 31 was happening this weekend, which I completely forgot about, to be perfectly honest, which I used to never forget about a TakeOver. That used to be something I would be waiting for and just waiting to count down to and be excited about. I completely forgot it was happening. But... Um, but here, it's just, uh, that, that doesn't help that I feel like, you know, we're, we're getting too many of these things. It's, it's also like, just the overall intrigue in NXT just isn't what it used to be. And it's not what um, I enjoyed. But again, I think the show will be solid. I don't think they will allow the show to be bad, because that's what NXT does. They go out there and give 110% and uh, do the absolute best that they can. Um, and more often than not, that works. Uh, so hopefully this goes well. Uh, hopefully it goes well enough. I'll I'll be watching it just because I've you know I've watched the other thirty. Why would I stop at thirty one? But uh, hopefully it comes off well, and hopefully NXT can start making some changes to make the show better. Namely, moving to Tuesday nights I think would be better fit for them personally. <laughs> moving to a different night of the week. Um, I don't know. Seems. It, it, again, when you look at it as the goal is to harm AEW and literally no other reason, it's like, okay, that's why they're doing it. That's 
Because otherwise they would have looked at the ratings from a couple weeks ago when they weren't going head to head and been like, okay, it makes more sense to just be on a different night from AEW. And they didn't change. So what are you going to do? I don't know. But anyways, that's all I have for you here. Thanks again, everybody, for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit the little bell icon so you get notified when I post new videos. And be sure to check out Weekday Warriors of Wrestling. The link will be in the description. We should have our new episode up. Uh, uh, we're filming it, or we're recording it tomorrow, and we'll probably have it up either later Friday night or early Saturday morning, making us we end Warriors of Wrestling. But hey, what are you going to do? So uh, that is all I have for you now. Thanks again, everybody, for watching, and I'll see you all later.